A budding magician, inventor, and chocolatier named Willy Wonka shows up at the gallery's gourmet with aspirations of opening his own chocolate business. After depleting his paltry money, Wonka is forced to stay at Mrs. Scroobit's boarding house by her goon bleacher. Ignorant Noodle warns him about the fine print, but Wonka accepts a contract nevertheless. He introduces hoverchocks, chocolates that allow people to fly, but the chief of police seizes his earnings for selling without a store, along with those of competitor chocolatiers Slugworth, Prodnose, and Ficklegruber. When Wonka is unable to pay the astronomical costs associated with the contract, he is apprehended and made to work at Scrubbit's Laundrette with Noodle, Abacus Crunch, Larry Chucklesworth, Piper Benz, and Lottie Bell. Noodle offers to teach Wonka to read when he reveals that his love of chocolate is a result of his late mother. Wonka also claims that a mysterious small orange man is stealing his products. Threatened by Wonka's superior and more reasonably priced chocolate, Slugworth and the Chocolate Cartel pay the toothy chief in order to scare Wonka. As a diversion, Scrubbit and Bleacher fall in love as Wonka and Noodle break into the zoo to milk Abigail the giraffe in order to manufacture his famous chocolate. Crunch, an accountant who formerly worked for Slugworth, discloses that the cartel keeps a hidden chocolate vault where they keep bribes to stay in power. In order to pay off their debts, Wonka and the laundromat employees go on a chocolate selling rampage dodging the police by hiding in the city storm drains. Unmasked, the relentless chocolate thief is revealed to be Lofty, an Oompa Loompa who wants revenge for the cocoa beans Wonka stole while he was watching over Lumpaland. Lofty is captured by Wonka, but he tricks Wonka into releasing him by hitting Wonka with a frying pan and then making off with a jar of chocolates. Wonka establishes his ideal chocolate shop, now that he owns a legal business and the cartel is unable to apprehend him, Scroobit uses Yeti sweat to tamper with Wonka's chocolates. Wonka's store is destroyed as a result of the chaos that breaks out among his patrons. Reluctantly, Wonka agrees to the cartel's offer to settle everyone's debts in exchange for his departure from the town. While Slugworth pays Scroobit to keep Noodle indefinitely, the laundry workers are released. Wonka assumes that Noodle and Slugworth are linked before realizing that the cartel has set up the boat to blow up with Lofty's help. After saving Noodle, Wonka and his allies come up with a plan to get the cartel's damning accounting book. After Wonka and Noodle infiltrate the cartel's headquarters by using Abigail as a distraction, the cartel confronts them. Slugworth reveals that he informed Noodle's mother Dorothy that her father, his own brother Zebedee, had passed away, but he gave the child to Scroobit in order to remove her claim to the family's wealth. Wonka and Noodle are kidnapped, kept captive at gunpoint, and on the verge of drowning in chocolate until Lofty, who is still owed money by Wonka, steps in to save them. The cartel's business is destroyed when Wonka and Noodle reveal their wrongdoings and pour their chocolate reserves now infused with Wonka's special ingredients, into the municipal fountain. While everyone enjoys Wonka's chocolate, the cartel and the chief are taken into custody. Upon opening the final chocolate bar his mother had given him, Wonka finds a note inside that says, the secret is it's not the chocolate that matters, but the people you share it with. Reuniting Noodle with her mother, Wonka splits the bar with his newfound buddies. After paying Lofty back for his debt, Wonka buys an abandoned castle to build his own chocolate factory, hiring Lofty as his taster chef. While Scroobit and Bleacher are taken into custody, Wonka's buddies joyfully resume their previous lifestyles.